I want to talk a little bit about the concept of polyhierarchy. And to do that, I'm going to use some visual aids. This is a piece of abalone shell, but for us, it's going to be the item, the thing that we're trying to locate in a, in a hierarchy or taxonomy. And um, this is the item itself. And these are two little barnacles that I pulled off that rock over there that represent um, references to this. So on, imagine on each of these barnacles is written abalone shell. The abalone shell goes here. Okay, so let me make a taxonomy here or a, um, or a hierarchy. Here's the root. Coming off the root is a branch. Coming off of that branch is another branch with some piers. Coming off this last branch here is another branch. Hopefully you can see that okay. And then coming off this branch is a branch with some piers. Okay, just to review, this is the idea of a hierarchy. If this was a book, this would be the title of the book. This would be part one, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, heading one, subheading one, subheading two, subheading three, right? It's an outline, it's a hierarchy. And we're gonna deal with this concept of polyhierarchy. So the question is, I have this abalone shell, and this abalone shell has to go somewhere on this outline, right? So let's say I put it here. That's where it is. Maybe this is a taxonomy of, um, of sea life. And the abalone goes right here in the sea life. So if I do that, the abalone is here and only here and can't be anywhere else. I can't have the same shell in, an, in another location, right? That's a mono hierarchy. Every item in the hierarchy is unique, uniquely located at one place, one and only place in the hierarchy. That's a mono hierarchy. Now, how about a poly hierarchy? In a poly hierarchy, I want the same item, abalone shell. Now, maybe this is not a, um, maybe this is not a taxonomy of, uh, it's not a taxonomy of, of, of life anymore. It's a taxonomy of dishes. And here's Chinese food, and the Chinese use abalone. And down here is, uh, or let's see, this is, this is Asian food, and this is Chinese food. The Chinese use abalone. Japanese use abalone. So the Chinese and the Japanese will use abalone but I only have one place to put my abalone shell. So instead of putting the abalone shell there, I put the abalone shell here, and I say foods. Can you see that? That says food. And then I have all my food items, not in a hierarchy. They're in some sort of sequence. And there's my abalone over there under food. And over here, cuisine. I now need to put the abalone from here into two places in my outline. Here's the Japanese use of abalone. Here's the Chinese use of abalone. How am I going to put that one shell in two different places? By using references. Here's a reference to the abalone. This barnacle is a reference to the abalone. It goes here. I have another reference to the abalone. It goes here. Now the abalone is in two different places on my hierarchy. It's under Japanese food and under Chinese food. And these references point. They aren't the abalone. They point to the abalone over here. OK, that's the concept of poly hierarchy. When you have a poly hierarchy, you have the same item at two different places in a hierarchy. Or you know, a taxonomy is another way of saying that. And, and uh, I kind of mess around by using the word taxonomy. What I really want to say is hierarchy. You'll hear the word taxonomy a lot, but I like the word hierarchy because that's what we're talking about. Poly hierarchy, same item, two different places in the hierarchy. How can you possibly have the same item two different places? Because the item itself isn't in the hierarchy. Only references to the item are in the hierarchy. Mono hierarchy, the hierarchy has no references in it. The items are one and well, actually, I don't want to say it has no references in it. What I want to say is that the item is at one and only one place. That taxonomy or that hierarchy is now called dichotomous. So why would you want a dichotomous hierarchy or a poly hierarchy? Well, I gave you a good example of why you might want a poly hierarchy, and that's because I really do want the same item at two different places. I have abalone there. It's in Chinese food and it's also in Japanese food. My hierarchy here is a hierarchy of different cuisines, and the abalone belongs in two different places. It really does belong in two different places, logically. On the other hand, taxonomies themselves, or hierarchies, were originally created as dichotomous classifications of objects. 
So for example, the, um, the, 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 the real classic taxonomical um, uh, categorization is uh, uh, a genus, species, let's see, <laughs> no, I'm not getting it. Kingdom, ordum, fi kingdom, order, phylum, genus, species, right? That's the, that's the taxonomy of life. And it was created specifically so that each form of life only goes in one place. So that's one where we want a monohierarchy. We don't want polyhierarchy. So is polyhierarchy good or is it bad? Well, the real question is, what's the logic of the material into which the items are going? If the logic of the material into which the items are going is that the same item really logically belongs in various categories, then you have a polyhierarchy. If, it, if the logic of the information is such that you really want to make dichotomous choices, specific choices between one category and another for pedagogical reasons, for example, for didactic reasons, you want to say life falls into these categories and if it's in this category it ain't in any other category, then a monohierarchy is really what you want. Okay, so I don't want to make some value judgment like a monohierarchy or a polyhierarchy is always the way to go. I would say, however, if what you're doing is creating an outline of your site, you should be very careful about doing polyhierarchy because part of what you're trying to establish with the outline of your site is that, is that didactic purpose, that pedagogical purpose of teaching people what is in this system. And if they find the same thing in two different places in the system, are they going to be confused? What you might play with in that situation is instead of literally putting the item at two different places, watch this. I could do this. So here's, this is now my website outline. And this is the, this is the page on abalone. And so this is my site hierarchy. I put the page on abalone here at one and only one place. So it belongs here. And then over here, I'm in, say this is Chinese food, this is Japanese food, I say, see the item. I make a little line from this, this is still a reference, to this place in the hierarchy. Which means that the item has a home in the hierarchy. It really does only belong in one place. But there are other places that say, you know what, if you ended up here by mistake, I want to point you to here. It's like a C reference inside of, a, uh, inside of, a, um, uh, inside of uh, an index. You're in the wrong place when you're down here. I want you to be over here. I want you to know that it belongs over here, but I don't want to screw you if you get to this place and, ha and give you no indication of what you did wrong or where you want to go. So that's kind of playing the margin between a poly hierarchy and a mono hierarchy. You're making the, the, the prescriptive decision that the item goes one and only one place in the hierarchy, but on the other hand, you're allowing for people to go to the wrong place and be directed to the right place. So poly hierarchy, mono hierarchy. Last thing to talk about is the idea of a faceted classification. In a faceted classification, which you may or may not have learned about before, um, you click down through a series of categories to get to the item that you want. It's like a pro progressive filtering. And what it appears to be when you're looking at it on many websites is that you're drilling down through a hierarchy. You choose the first subject matter, and then under the first subject matter, you choose the second one, third one. And they even present little crumb trails on the web page to show you that you've gone down through this path. Now, is that an example of poly hierarchy? Well, many people would say that it is. Many people would say that the whole idea of a faceted classification is to give you different ways of presenting hierarchies. But as you'll see as you get to the end of this course, especially if you're in the more tech option, is that, in fact, a faceted classification is really a set of indexes. That are, all, that, are all, um, that, that are all in play at the same time. And so it's not a hierarchical structure at all. It's an indexical structure. And a faceted classification is based on various indexes all simultaneously applied. It's not created behind the scenes as a polyhierarchical structure. All right, so that's polyhierarchy and monohierarchy.